Alright, hello and welcome to this, our final video in the How To Legends series. Today, today we're going to be talking about deck building. Uh, we want to be discussing, let me pull up my list here, make sure I don't miss anything. So we're going to go through various uh, terms that you'll hear thrown around while we're deck building. We'll discuss them as we get to them. But we're going to be trying to build four different types of decks today and kind of walking you through the process of what you're looking for in each deck. And hope we can also take that and apply it into the ladder as you're trying to guess what your opponent will have. Uh, so we're going to walk through what an aggro list is, what a mid-range list is, what a control list is, and then what differentiates control from combo. So, aggro, you guys are familiar with them. At least right now, as of the filming of this, they're kind of everywhere on the ladder. Hit face as quick as possible. Try to finish off your opponent. Nothing more to see here. No real tricks. No real control. All about that face. Uh, Mid-range. I should add little asterisks here. Ask 10 people and everyone's going to have a different definition of, of mid-range. The way I am defining mid-range is you're not going to have your opponent finished by turn 5. As that's typically my hallmark of if you're extreme aggro. You c and you have at least one comeback mechanic in your deck so that you can play from behind. So there I've gone and thrown out two terms. Let's touch on those. Playing from behind. It's when you're behind on health. Your opponent has more health than you. If you're trying to race, if you're trying to hit them in the face before they have hit you in the face and you are dead, and you are losing that quote-unquote race, you need a way to get back into the game. So a comeback mechanic there. In this game, or in this deck, it's Grim. Grim Shield Brother is one. Gives you Drain. Gives him a way to get back into it. Uh, runs Dark Seducer. Large Guard. Drain as well. Covenant Masterpiece Drain. Prophecies can function as comeback mechanics, though not usually. Typically, Prophecy is in its own kind of deck where you run into like Prophecy Battle Mage where they try to gain additional tempo that way, allowing them to control the game. But, mid range typically will have larger cards. So you see us topping out here at 9. We've got plenty of 8 drops, a couple 7 drops, 6 drops. Some of them aggressive, some of them dual purpose can be aggressive and controly. Sower, good solid card, last gasp, deal 5 damage, we got 3 of them. A little bit of silence, a little bit of tech. Uh, tech cards being in there, usually not more than 1 or 2, but designed to serve a specific purpose or combat a specific deck. U shield, nice little just gives a guard and plus 1, plus 1 for each creature in the lane. I like it, doesn't see a lot of play. A single pointy wall of spikes because eh, I guess it fit. It's been a while since I built this deck. But control. So control, your win condition often can be your opponent uh, resigns, concedes. You do need some form of win condition eventually. So this is a control deck. You'll notice it's got a lot of single target removal. It has... I don't think I run... This one doesn't run area of effect removal, but you'll usually see ice storms. If somebody's feeling particularly controlly or there's been a lot of tokens, fire storms might see a comeback. But usually you're trying to remove what your opponent is playing and generate card advantage, so trying to get multiple kills for one. Usually there's a lot of comeback mechanics in decks like this. For this one it is uh, Bruma Profiteer, Guild Sworn Revitalizer, nice ways of gaining health. On the upper end we've got Mushroom Tower, which gives our actions betray, so that we can start playing them twice. Play one Javelin, sacrifice, say, a Vardvark, play another Javelin. One javelin, two creatures removed. This deck is also a little bit meme because the goal was to uh, get Mushroom Tower and then play two Soul Shreds right after each other and try to get rid of the entire opponent's deck, but hey, it's it's still a control deck. Not the greatest control deck, it's a meme control deck, 
but it's a control deck. Uh, Mage's Guild Conjurer functions as one of its end of game threats with a single necro to bring it back in case it gets removed. Now what differentiates combo from control? So they're going to be playing a very similar uh, win condition, or sorry, a very similar game plan for the early game where they're both going to be remove, remove, remove. However, with combo, and let me see if I can find one of my combo decks sitting here. Uh, Sparky Pants counts. So with this one, usually it can win. The definition of combo, it can win or generate a winning board state from hand. Such that there's really nothing your opponent can do. Usually you'll hear this described as like an OTK or one turn kill combo. So what this one tries to do is you're trying to collect... Stolen Pants, Sparksmith, this one kind of cheats, you want to have a Corsair ship or two in play, it's not required, but you need Sparksmith, Gardener of Swords, and as many Stolen Pants as you can get. And then you try to play Stolen Pants, which summons a 0-1 Sheepish Dunmer, if you have a Corsair ship, he gets a dagger, because he equipped a dagger, deal 1 damage. Then, because you've got a uh, Gardener of Swords in play, Stolen Pants copies over. So he just equipped a Stolen Pants. Deal one damage. Uh, he copies the dagger that was played earlier. Deal one damage. We'll play this deck out to kind of show you guys how it's done. But this is a interesting example of a combo deck. There's some that have been actually competitive. Uh, Nixox combo is one that immediately jumps to mind. This one's more for the fun, but I enjoy it. But, deck building. Now that we know the different types of decks, we're going to try to build a couple budget decks. How they're going to work? Well, that's going to be questionable, but we're going to throw them together. So, what we're going to define as budget is we're going to grab commons, rares, and we'll include only one legendary. So part of the reason we're doing this is because, hey, if you need to if you need to craft a collection, commons, they only cost 50 soul gems to summon. So it's going to be real easy to acquire what you need. So what I am looking for, now these are just alternate art firebrands. This is what your normal one looks like. What you're looking for is with aggro, how can I push the most damage base possible? So, zero cost, one, one charge. One cost, plus two, plus two. Two cost, if it gets beast form, four, three. Decent stats. You do have to be a little bit worried about removal, but in reality, you're aggro. You're hitting face as hard as possible. A couple prophecies, those will be good to hit. You do want enough two drops that you're guaranteed to get one at the beginning of the game. Um... So we're going to play Riyadh Horseman, because if we can get a Scimitar on him, he becomes the 4-4, 2-2 four, four, two, two plus the 2-2 two, two from the Scimitar. But then he gets an extra free 3. And I think, well, well, we'll run some charge so that we can do some damage from hand. Uh, we'll put in Covenant Plate. Just grab one premium down there, because I feel like it. Uh, Euraxian Berserker. 3 cost. 4-4 four, four, as long as we have something in the graveyard to consume. We're on lower Canton Smith so that we can get extra scimitars for our horsey boy. Um, we're looking like we're going majority red. So we'll grab some mighty allies. Minotaurs. Uh, if Minotaur gets consumed out of the graveyard, it gives an additional plus one, plus one in breakthrough. Potentially turning this guy into a 5-5 five, five with breakthrough, which would be nice. I'll run some shield breakers to get past guards like Hive Defender. I think we're going to tech in... So, when I'm adding cards, if I ever want two of them in my hand, I run three. If I never ever want two of them in my hand, I run two. So, example here. Rift and Pillager. He's a 2-3 three for three. He is an understated creature, but has a really powerful summon. Summon plus one, plus one for each destroyed enemy rune. 
if we can go face and break runes, that's great. I just don't want two of them in the in my hand at the start. Now we're probably going to end up going just a tad larger here, but things like Ulfric Zealot, pretty good value putting a heavy battle axe into our hand. Uh, we do have a lot of three drops, so we're going to kind of watch how much expensive stuff we're putting in the deck. Did I scroll past something? Do I have a filter on? Oh, we're on commons. Teehee, I'm like, there is a card that I am looking for that I do not see. Where is that card? That card is Cradle Crush Giant. Just getting some ways of uh, breakthrough, well, breakthrough from one of the other giants, but... Damage AoE. We'll put an Orc Clan Captain, just plus one damage to all creatures in the lane. That's fine. Uh, we'll run Raiding Party for additional Nords. I'm going to run the alternate art one. Oh, we're already at 55. Alright, so the other thing I do with my decks. I will not build to 50 cards. I will throw in everything I want. And then I'll go in and I'll start cutting cards. We're going to put in two Northwind Outposts. So we're going to come back to this. Um, I am going to avoid... Normally I would put an Unstable Madman. He does come from a, a story pack, so we're going to avoid him for the moment. Oh, some of you guys might be story packs. We'll go back and check that. Bidding. Candle Hearth Brawler. Enraged Dragon Knight. There's Cradle Crush. Underworld Vigilante, a nice 5 cost 4 1 charge. And it does force our enemy to lose cover if we have to pull something out from cover. Then we'll run Jarl for some card draw. And I think that's going to be our top end. We don't really need to go big. So what's our legendary going to be? Well, let's go ahead and start cutting here first. Uh, I know your core. Skyrim, that's fine. Your core. We're just going to make sure I didn't throw in a whole bunch of cards that are otherwise hard to get. So I'll make sure... Oh, that's Dark Brotherhood. Alright, Protector of the Innocent. You're out! Horseman, you're good. Let's see. Who else did we put in here? You. So far, so good. I know your moons of elsewhere. Morrowind, moons, core. And we use the alt art, but it's core. Alright, looks like we're looking good. Alright, we didn't go too crazy, but we're up to 67. Now, we are using this guy as a plot, as a way of getting out that scimitar from our lower Canton Smith. So we're going to actually cut down to two of most of our cards. And what that does is it helps even out our curve. So we're cutting down a lot of three drops. 57, all right, let's start attacking the two drops. All right, and that gives us room for one legendary. So let's take a look. We could put in a Relentless Raider if we wanted even more aggression after we break an enemy rune, deal one extra damage. Uh, there is Garnag, which limits people to seven Magicka, which wouldn't affect us, but could affect our opponent. Although I think we're not going to use him because I'm, he's Dark Brotherhood. Reeve is a good pick, though. Or sorry, Reeve. Garnag. Reeve is what we might end up going with. He's core. Blood Dragon is solid. Also core. We might have enough orcs. How many orcs are we running? Two. Four. Six. Eight. So one-fifth of our deck would trigger Wood Orc Headhunter, which would give us a five-cost, five-charge. 
Uh, Sill is Isle of Madness, so I don't want to use her. Also a good choice. Titanborn. If our opponent tries to drain, Titanborn can be very good because it always destroys the rune, which means if they're at 30 health and have one rune, they're at 5 health. If they're at 30 health and have no runes, they're dead. So it's between her and Reeve. Reeve gets 2 damage when attacking the opponent, then if he does it again, it does 4. If he does it again, it's 6. So he's kind of one of the snowball cards that if your opponent doesn't control or silence, he gets out of hand. He's got a decent body for trading as well. We'll put in Reeve. Chances of seeing him are pretty tiny, but we'll put him in. Alright. So we are mono red. Was there any uh, multi-attribute cards that we wanted to put in? We want to stick it to two attributes. We could go Crusader. But, oh wait, I think, yeah, the ones we'd want. We could get Crusader's Assault for more card draw. I think we'll be fine. Try and We're avoiding the uh, epics for the most part right now, just with the budget list. If you have them, you can build a much better list by adding epics. We went for the cheapest list we could build. Sans 1 Legendary. Alright. So we've got our mono red. We'll take it to the ladder just to play probably just one game. Just to kind of give you a feel on how we're looking to play it. Win or lose. Then we'll move on and we'll take a look at building a mid-range list. Alright, so we are up against... Oh, that's Guild Sworn. Yes. Alright. So... He's rank 3. We really need a 2 drop in hand. He could be aggressive or he could be control. Guildsworn does both. Well, we got a 2 drop. But it's not one I want to open with. We'll see if we pull something better. Like if I pull a Nord Firebrand, I feel better because then on turn 3 we can put out the lower camp. Uh, That'll do. Uh, because red has cheap charge, we're going to go straight to the shadow lane because all it takes is one health and that's removed. He passes. So I have no way of triggering these, but I still think, well, I'm going to go with it's not worth one point of damage to break that root. So we're going to play the Orc Clan Captain after, even though normally you'd play him for the extra damage. Didn't matter. We're gonna ring out a candle hearth. Hit a prophecy. This game's already going great. Keeps it. Interesting what it is then that he opted not to kill our Orc Clan captain. We do have the buffed attack here. So theoretically, up. Uh, I mean, we still trade. We're just going to go and get that out so that next turn... Alright, it's a second Prophecy. Also keeps it in hand. Very interesting. So my guess is one of them was that. But I think what we're going to do here is we got to get our Rift and Pillager out. But we could try to break more runes first. I think we're going to try to break more runes. Going to just give the sword over to the orc clan. Give them a little bit of extra health. And we still have the 4-2 here. So he gets the plus one from North one. Alright. We're going to break out the next sword first, unfortunately. Oh, give me a card. I would love a card right now. Just break that rune. Two damage to the face. Unsummons my work clan. But he's free now. Orcs have the ready. Let's see if we 
can't reach and sharpened weapons. Don't care to be and we're just gonna go ahead and develop our Rift and Pillager. He is one magic short of being able to play Dawn's Wrath, so we're fine in one lane. We should be able to draw two cards from this next turn. We know he's playing Skavens, but he's already played one. Let's draw first. Sadly, we can't play the Shield Breaker. Uh, because of his prophecies, we're going to front load our damage. Both of them would break runes. So we're actually looking at lethal right there, plus any one creature on board. So we're sitting in a pretty good spot. Unsummons his Skaven. Well, that answers those two. Still has two creatures he needs to answer. We must protect our stronghold. This is looking pretty good. And he's setting up for what would be an unstoppable rage. We're not going to let him get there. Bump him to six. Skip the last rune. And that's game. Aggro, we finished on turn eight. It's a little slow, but it worked. For a budget deck, it worked. Oh boy, we're at the knee. Alright, so that is the quick how-to aggro. Now let's move over to mid-range. Mid-range, so... What do we want to do for mid-range? Can't ponder this too long... So I think we're going to end up just going Covenant because I know what I can do with that. Alright, so let's, we're in multi-attribute. Let's just go ahead and grab this. This I'll end up taking it. Well, actually, no. It's negation. I'll end up keeping it because negation's great. Uh, what Covenant card can we grab? Uh, you're from the Covenant pre-build deck, so we'll include you. Actually, if I bought the Covenant pre-build deck, we'll build that. We'll just take that and we'll start that with our Legendary. I have not. Alright, this will be our starting point. So we're allowed any epics and legendaries that are in this pre-built deck. That's the quest deck I'm working on. Did it put it down here at the bottom? It did. Alright. So this is... Aggro Covenant, but it's Aggro Item Covenant. That's at least kind of cool. We'll keep it. We're going to drop tel Telekinesis, Sparksmith, Enlistment Officer, Conscript could be interesting. Drop Salvage. Soul Wraith. So it's heavily item based. That's not bad. So now we're going to want a way, a couple ways to get back into the game. Our prophecy counts at 9. It's not too bad. Let's just type in Drain. You're from Clockwork City. Good card to include. We will not be including. I will put Grim Shield Brother in. We've got enough that we should be able to break a rune early. Or break a rune late. And getting the Drain then stacking some items on it will be good. Night Shadow. Oh, but he is too high on the rarity. And you're from... Dark Brotherhood, right? Yeah. Quora Clan? We've got a bunch of items. A 1-5 is typically terrible for trading, but a 1-5 with, say, a Poison Dagger? Mm, that's pretty good. I think we'll pass, though. I think Grim Shield Brother's going to have to be enough. So we're going to be on the faster side of mid-range. 
So let's also... Are we running lightning bolts in this? We are not. That's a pretty easy add. Just give us a little bit of control. Where are you at? There you at. Ooh, let's go with the premium lightning bolts. Honestly, of the alt art, the premium, I prefer the premium. Let's see. What else do we want to put in here? Normally, I'd say we, let's grab some item buffers, but, but I think their rarity is too high. Uh, skilled blacksmith actually could fit. You're from Isle of Madness, so we're not putting you in. Oh, you're from the Madhouse Collection. Gardener's really good here, though. Oh, you're just from Skyrim. Get in there. We run only uh, 32 items, and getting those buffed would be great. Uh, we do have Guard and Rehad Battle Mage, plus item. They did give us one Arcane Enchanter. Oh, I probably have four now because I bought the deck. I was like, but it says three. I was confused. We put our, our Sparksmith back in. Let's put the Telekinesis back in. It gives us an interesting trick we can pull. It came with one. I pulled it out. It's back now. Equip all items in play to a friendly creature. Let's go. So why is this mid-range? Uh, we've got some ways of getting back at the game. So if our opponent, let's say our opponent is that red aggro deck that we just built. We have some drain. We have some removal to try to control them. But we also can do damage face. We're, we're still not trying to go to 12 magicka. We're trying to go to about 9 magicka, 10 magicka at the latest. Assassin. So Assassin's one of those aggro lists. Uh, they run a lot of burst. Damage from hand. We'll keep the two drop. It's actually pretty good. We could turn our horse into a, what is it? A 3, 5, 6, 5? Master Swordsmith, also a pretty good early pull. Your destruction is at hand. This might be handy. So we could give it a dagger. We're not going to risk it. We're just going to play this over here. If there was no dagger, I'd probably take the 50% roll. But it looks like he is very aggressive. So we are going to open up not going face and just trying to control down the board. Get guards out. There's some of that burst I was talking about. Just plays a card, cycles, two damage face. Don't underestimate me. This might be handy. Plays out another Crown Quartermaster. We're just gonna go ahead and give the give it guard. Does break a rune, but is gonna require him to play one of his daggers here. Which will be fine. This does have mobilized, so we can play this directly to the board into an empty lane. So we could potentially have two cards to drop next turn. And being as it will be a purple and a red, if he doesn't trade, that allows us to get Covenant Oathmen in play. Which will draw a random card, but then we could buff an item, which I guess would be the item. Alright, just plays it for two damage face. I'm ready. Die, Outlander. Another ice spike? Can we hit a prophecy? No. Um, so we could put this down as a guaranteed guard. I think it's only three damage. We don't need the guard at the moment. We're just gonna go ahead and get some creatures on board. And that gives us five next turn, so we can get Rehad and Enchanted Plate on it, which will give us a very solid beefy guard. So he'll be 3-6 normally, 3-9, whichever lane he commits to. He 
He does have a dagger, so he could get this trade. I don't expect him to take it, because he's going to want his damage face. If he does take it, hopefully the three damage goes here, and he plays the shadow lane. What have you got? Decadance? Decadance? Ghost face. Alright, so we're going to be forced to take the trade. Blood and faith. Pulls the shackle mace. That's fine. Into the prey. So now we've got our 3-9 guard. When this dies, he does 3 damage. But... It's better than taking three damage. I uh, do have a Shackle Mace. So he, we can lock down one creature in the Shadow Lane. Cliff Racer, you need to be locked down. You are no with my vengeance. So I really want you to get the guard. Gonna play you down. We're gonna lock that. We're gonna just start bumping his health back down. Ultimately, this guy's gonna end up getting the Covenant Mail, so that we've got a uh, eight health guard in that lane. Still looking for our drain to stabilize. Gives us the guard. But we're now within Lightning Bolt of being dead. Uh, let's play this guy to get another guard in the lane. This thing. This might do in a pinch. Now this is a fine piece of fight. For the ancestors. Could just have a Lightning Bolt here. We did manage to get our guards. They were a tad late. Crab to the face. Thievery to the face. Yeah, without Drain, we were really never had a chance in that, but hey, if we went back into it, maybe we'd add more Drain. The two the two cost one five would have actually done some pretty serious work there. Oh, advanced a couple quests. That's cool. So yeah. If we were to go back and tweak this. If you've got drain, put in more drain. Uh it dawned on me about halfway through that game. That this one did not actually run Sorcerer's Negations. We did have Fire Bolts. We never found them. They would have been extremely helpful for removing his cheap creatures. So, just a bad matchup. Pretty solid deck, though. But, we need to move on. Control. Control.